to play Zygarde EX, of course, is not weak to Psychic, which, you know, Buzzwell GX is, and one of the main counters that these Zoark Eggs decks have to the Psychic Week Buzzwell GX is their Mewtwo, and we see in this case the Mewtwo Evolutions as opposed to the Mewtwo EX, so Zygarde EX could definitely play a factor, as well as Lycanroc GX also not being weak to Psychic. Yeah, another cool thing about Sydney's list, she's actually running a copy of Wide Lens, uh, which, uh, <clears throat> it's a tool card that you attach to a Pokemon, and it allows you to uh, hit a bench Pokemon for weak and resistance with uh, with a sniping attack. So that'll allow Buzzwolf to actually kill Zeruas in one hit. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be really important for Joey to find his Mr. Mime if he wants to avoid that potential early two prizes from Sydney. So hopefully Joe's going to have access to that Mr. Mime, that bench barrier ability, of course, preventing damage done to benched Pokemon from attacks. And we've seen a lot of the Zoark, basically all the Zoark decks, switching to playing this Mr. Mime because of how popular Buzzwool was expected to be heading into the weekend. Yeah, the last thing uh, that seems pretty interesting here, she's actually playing three copies of Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, mm -hmm. Another very interesting choice, um, not opting for uh, for choice band or muscle band yeah definitely not what we expect to see out of these buzzwell decks i'd say usually you want the muscle bands gives you that extra damage on things like trubbish um you know choice band lets you hit for more damage on things like zoark gx but often just for the fighting fury belts really wants to have high hp buzzwell gx's and it's obviously paid off for her here being 4-0 joe is coming into this round at 301 and both of these guys are in a great spot here heading into the rest of this tournament. And looks like Sid's going to be going first. Starting off with an Ultra Ball, going to go ahead and find a Buzzwell GX along with an Energy Attachment and an N to follow up with that. Yeah, she uh, she started the Baby Buzzwell, a card we actually haven't really seen much of. A lot of hype around that card, but we have not had a chance to actually see it uh, do some damage here. So uh, hopefully she can use that to her advantage this time. Absolutely. N is going to shuffle each of these players' hands into their decks. They'll draw a number of cards equal to the number of prize cards they have remaining. And we'll see what else Sydney wants to get off on this turn. Can maybe find something like, um, you know, some Max Elixirs to start powering up that Buzzwool even more. But if she puts too many energies on Buzzwool at once, she opens herself up to being attacked by a Mewtwo from Evolutions on Joey's side. Yeah, it looks like Sydney plays that Brooklet Hill, a staple card of every Buzzwool deck. This is going to allow her to get a, a Rock Rough here, um, get that set up, start going for next turn, or whenever she does want to use the Catcher effect. So this is really a great start for Sydney, exactly where she wants to be. Yeah, she's going to have basically everything she wants in play at this point. She's got the Rimmeraid down so she can get her Octillery in play, got the Rock Rough down to have access to Bloodthirsty Eyes and Dangerous Rogue later. Already has Baby Buzzwool in play, maybe not the best starter, but... You know, is definitely something that is usually can come in and have an effect against these Zoark decks. Yeah, Joey opts to use the Brooklet Hill right away. Uh, this is good for a couple of reasons. He can use it as a free search without having to play a supporter, which is very huge for the Zoark decks. And also he can find a pseudo Wudo if he wants it, uh, help limit Sydney's bench, maybe give him a chance later in the game. Yep, yeah, you know, there's really no reason not to go ahead and get pseudo Wudo unless he doesn't have access to it in the deck. You know, it, it uh, means that he'll... You know, thin one more card out of his deck, it's in play. It, you know, Buzzwool is a deck that can operate with not a huge bench size, so it doesn't, the roadblock ability doesn't hurt that much, but uh, actually opting not to get it here, maybe he doesn't have access to it, or maybe Joe has something else in mind. Yeah, it doesn't look like, uh, didn't look like he want to take anything, maybe he was just checking for something. I imagine he's got some sort of way to get a Bridget, uh, maybe a Lele. He wants to get a lot of Zeruas down, um, especially he wants to get that Mr. Mime down. Yeah, Mr. Mime is going to be very important here, that bench barrier ability, making sure that Sydney can't take multiple prizes in one single turn with just a one energy attack on Buzzwool GX. Yeah, that so, wide lens will be very useful. Yeah, and with three copies of Karina in her deck, she has lots of ways to find it. Also, the Tapu Lele Ultra Ball can find the Tapu Lele. Just so many ways to find the card if she needs it. We also see Sydney's actually not playing any copies of VS Seeker. Kind of seen this from some of these fighting decks in the expanded format in the past. Opting not to play any copies of it, making themselves less vulnerable to things like Getsis. And looks like Joey actually just had that Sudowoodo in his hand, so that's why uh, he didn't get it with Brooklet Hill. Joey opts to Battle Compressor here. Likely going to pitch a couple eggs. Uh, that'll help save some resources when he uses Ultra Ball. Uh, maybe he takes a Supporter here as well. Could be a Bridget that he takes if he has VS Seeker, um, or Supporter for later. Yeah, Battle Compressor is just another out most of the time to a turn one Bridget. You know, if you open up with a VS Seeker or even like two puzzle a time in your hand, you can use that to get the Bridget going turn one to get multiple Zeruas in play. And uh, we'll just have to see what he gets rid of. Probably the two eggs at least. And if he already has another way to get Bridget, we might see him discard another supporter like, as we see here, Hex Maniac. Interesting choice with the Hex Maniac. He's setting, it looks like he's probably setting up for later turns here, but uh, he must be pretty confident in, in his uh, setup with his hand right now. 
Ooh, Joe actually does not have a way to get turn one, Bridget. Gonna have to just propagation, put one execute on the bench, attaches to the active, and is gonna go ahead and Colrus here, only gonna draw five cards off of this, and he needs to find a lot of good cards off of this uh, this Colrus. Yeah, this uh, this buzz this buzz will be will be able to knock out the Zerua and an egg uh, if Joey doesn't get that out of there. But um, even if he does, he needs to find that Mr. Mime to make sure that Zerua is definitely protected. Yeah, I think if he doesn't hit um, another Zerua, he'll definitely just retreat this Zorark or this Zerua. It wants to protect those at all costs. It's actually interesting. We see Joey actually plays a split of the Zeruas. He plays three of the Dark Explorer Zerua that has the Paralyzing Gaze attack, and one Lunge Zerua, and the Lunge Zerua is actually the one that started, whereas this could have been an instance where Paralyzing Gaze could have come in handy. Yeah, definitely. Could have bought him, maybe bought him a turn, get a Zorak going, set up more. Um, Sydney right now, uh, something for her, very crucial, would be getting that wide lens, take out that Lone Zerua, a Guzma would work as well. Ooh, there's a Karina. If she has a Floatstone, way to retreat this active Buzzwole, she will be able to use the wide lens here if that's what she gets. Actually able to use Lycanroc to bring up the Zerua, can take two prizes here this turn and knock out the Execute. Let's see if she gets the wide lens or if she has uh, maybe a Floatstone if she wants to get that here. We'll just have to see what she goes with. She runs two copies of Floatstone, but on that first pass, I don't, I don't know if I saw one. Could have been a Field Blower that I saw, but definitely taking the Lycanroc, that's a great play. Um... Yeah, I don't know what she's going to take. Yeah, and even if she doesn't have the wide lens knockout here, she can just at least get Lycanroc. Looks like she's going to get Lycanroc and Elixir. She can attach an energy to the active Buzzwool, and Sledgehammer's base damage is 30, so it will be able to knock out the Fighting Weak Zerua and take Joe's only Zerua out of play. Yeah, looks so, like she's uh, opting for Ultra Ball, probably grabbing that Octillery, uh, maybe hoping to draw into a Floatstone here. Um, that way she can pull off this combo, but if not, yeah, like you said, does have that Sludgehammer knockout on Zerua. Yeah, definitely leaving herself with options here. I probably, you know, we might see her use this Elixir. We might see her attach before she play, uses Abyssal Hand. But we might see her actually use Abyssal Hand first. Just kind of what she draws might depend on how she plays out the rest of this turn. Yeah, definitely. So she opts to Elixir here. Um, what do you think she's placing this? Does she charge the uh, the Rockruff for a later Dangerous Rogue, or does she put it on Buzzwool? I think you put it on Rockruff here as we see her go ahead and do that. I think, you know, having your energy spread out, making sure you have lots of different options uh, for attackers later on is definitely important. And Sydney also doesn't know which version of Zoark Joe's playing. Like, we've seen the versions running around that have the Mewtwo EX with the plus power that can knock out one energy Buzzwolves. And uh, so she's going to opt to go ahead and just play her hand out. It brings up that Zerua. We do see the Abyssal Hand drawing her five cards here. Does have a B-string in her hand. That could be good in the future. And she's got energy on three different Pokemon right now on her second turn. She is in a really solid spot. This is a phenomenal board state for Sydney. I don't, I don't think one could be better. It's both Elixirs this turn. Uh, Joe will not even have a Zerua on his next turn. So this game is definitely with Sydney in the driver's seat. Yeah, this is looking really good for Sydney. Didn't find a way to retreat that Buzzwool, but still can Sledgehammer knock out so the Fighting Weak Zerua. Joe just sends up that Sudowoodo with no Zeruas in play. This is a tough spot. Does get the, uh, the Tapu Lele, though, so this can find him a Bridget now if he wants it. We'll have to see. Maybe he needs. he's, he's deeming himself farther behind here and needs to get himself more set up another way. He opts for a Colrus here. Uh, like you said, probably just hoping to draw into something more. Realizes a Bridget probably isn't going to be good enough now that Sydney's got this full board set up. Yeah, I think he had a Pokemon Communication in his hand, so he can use Execute, Propagate, put that back in the deck, and then use the Pokemon Communication. Get another Zerua that way. Also gets one more Bench Pokemon that he can use to draw more cards with Colrus. Grabs that Zerua. So he has a choice band in his hand. Gonna go ahead and attach that. Wants to thin that out. That's not something he wants to draw off of this chorus. And like like we said, he could have gone for a Zerua this turn, or excuse me, a Bridget this turn, gotten a couple of Zeruas, maybe the Mr. Mime in play. But really just seeing I'm behind in this game. I really need a lot in order to win this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and play chorus, try to draw more cards than what Bridget would give me, and see if I can just get a little lucky. Definitely. The chorus is for seven. Um, honestly, the only thing he needs is Zerua. Um, you know, mine would be great, but I, I wonder if Sydney will uh, opt to get a different Buzzwool here and start using a wide lens, maybe pick them off, pick off those Zeruas. Um, 
Yeah, she'll definitely have options. Joe has options himself, options to basically everything in his deck because we see that computer search in his hand, that powerful A-spec card that can allow him to search his deck for any card and put it in his hand. So he'll have access to another Zerua if he wants it, but maybe depending on what the rest of his hand looks like, he may go for something else. Joey opts to attach a double colorless to Lele. Going to start putting some pressure on that baby bus hole. Not really the best thing, but the best thing he can do right now. Um, computer search. What do you think he grabs here with this? We'll see here in a moment. Maybe another Zerua, though, would make the most sense to me, as you mentioned, just getting that in play. Make sure that you're going to at least have one Zorark GX on the next turn or have the ability to get one Zorark GX on the next turn. So that would make the most sense to me, but depending on the rest of his hand, uh, that might not be what he got. But it looks like you know, he just goes ahead and throws it down. So we see Tapu Lele come into the active with that double colorless energy. Energy Drive will deal 60 damage to this Buzzwool. And you, you don't really like seeing that on turn two if you're a Zoark deck. Definitely. Sydney looks like she tops a Guzma here. So uh, she'll be Ooh. able to take out at least one of those Zeroes for sure. Um, you know, honestly, the only thing I think Sydney wants right now is just setting up another Buzzwool and put this game even farther out of reach. Yeah, it looks like she's just going to go ahead and just power up this Buzzwool all the way to the max, put three energies on it that it needs to take knockouts. She's got a Buzzwool powered up. Lycanroc is one energy away from attacking. Draws that Deancey. She even gets the Karina here. If she has a Max Elixir, she could have maybe found Wide Lens off of this, but no, going to go ahead and just take the two prizes, knocking out the Fighting Week Zerua, and also taking out an egg on the bench. Yeah, she actually she played the Guzman that turn, so oh, she yeah. couldn't have used Karina. Of course. So we see Sudowoodo coming to the active spot on Joe's side. He has a Shaman in his hand. If he gets his hand low enough, he can draw a couple cards. We see at least one Zorak GX, so he'll at least be able to get something in play this turn. If I'm Joey here, uh, do you think I maybe need to start thinking about conserving time for game two and game three? Because Sydney has such a commanding board state. Is there really anything Joey can do to crawl back into this game? You know, it's really tough. I think Joe is thinking here, maybe I can find my Mewtwo evolutions, maybe get a field blower, take out this Buzzwell with the Fighting Fury Belt on it, put Sid in a tough spot. But then all Sid needs to do, she's got three prizes. She takes the one prize on Mewtwo with the baby Buzzwell, because Joey would be at four prizes. And then with the one energy on Lycanroc, she'll be able to take her last two prizes on basically anything she wants. Honestly, at this point in the game, I'm not sure what Joe needs to do to win. Joe replaces that Brooklyn Hill with Skyfield, uh, but that Sudowoodo is still down from Sydney, so he does only have one bench spot remaining here. I, I don't know what he can do here to, uh, to stave off this onslaught from Sydney. Yeah, he does have that Mewtwo. We might see that DCE if he can find one. Does still have access to trade this turn. And I think if he doesn't get an attack off with Mewtwo this turn, he might just go ahead and scoop his cards up and move on to the second game. Trying to conserve time, but still trying trade. to figure out what he wants to do. I didn't see what he drew. I think one of the cards was a Chorus. Ops to N. Uh, the N normally would be pretty good here, slow her down, but she does have that Octillery. Um, the Abyssal Hand ability allows you to draw until you have five cards in your hand, which is actually better the farther into the game you get uh, as you draw more and more cards with it. And Joe, actually, he had that Mewtwo in his hand, but chose not to bench it. Why do you think that is? Does he not want to attack the Buzzwool here with that Mewtwo? You know, I'm not sure. I think maybe he realizes that the chance of him getting DC and Choice Band off of this N are low, and he'd rather, you know, have another Zerua to try and get something going later. Um, I'm not really sure. You know, he might, he can still energy drive for a lot of damage here because of, the, you know, the three energies stacked up on that Buzzwell GX at this point in the game. The problem is that Sydney used Jet Punch to knock out uh, the two Pokemon last turn, so she can still Knuckle Impact this turn. So this Lele will get knocked out immediately, putting her down to one prize, and Joey is just in such a tough situation here. Yeah, we're going to see him send up that Tapu Lele. Energy Drive here deals 100 damage. Still at this point in the game, it's not often you see a Zoark deck move to turn number four and have not taken a single prize yet. Definitely. So looks like we're having a little bit of a discussion here. Just trying to figure some math out, I think. Just figuring out maybe how Sydney took her last couple prizes. Looks like all is good, though, and we're going to continue on with the game. Here's the ruin, and an egg is three. So uh, she does have a strong energy in her hand. She can go ahead and power up Lycanroc GX. Try to set up for that Dangerous Rogue on uh, to potentially win the game with that. Yeah, you know, she's... She she can really do anything she wants here, and I just don't see how Joey can... 
get out of this wide lens on the Lycanroc. <laughs> Not something you normally see for sure. Just wants to thin the card out so she can draw more with Abyssal Hand, though. I think that's definitely a sign that Sid is very hard, far ahead in this game if she's putting a wide lens on Lycanroc GX. Definitely, yeah. Um, I think if she, like you said, if she just attaches that strong, she has a plan knockout here to go down to one, and then can pretty much guarantee any knockout after that. You know, maybe she's worried about some combination of, like, red card plus hex as a big comeback potential from Joe. You know, her only w real way to get a consistent draw without playing a supporter is going to be that uh, Octillery. And, yeah, Joe's just going to go ahead and scoop up his cards. Yeah. He had to have seen the writing on the wall a um, couple turns ago, at least, and just now realized that this is over. So, yeah, maybe he wanted to just wait around, get a little more information about Sydney's deck, you know. If he had scooped up the previous turn, he actually might not have known that she has the Wide Lens, but we see her play the Wide Lens down on to that Lycanroc GX. Now Joe has that knowledge moving into game number two and three. Yeah, and that's, honestly, that's something that uh, I think is a very underrated aspect of uh, something pro players do. Even though they know the game is lost, they just try and use as much time as possible to gather any information that they can to help them in these future rounds. Yep, and it was interesting as well. Sydney chose not to attach that strong energy to the Lycanroc. Maybe she as well is unsure about Joe's list, maybe trying to play around a potential enhanced hammer that could come out. We saw Alex Wilson in round number one was playing enhanced hammer in his Zoark deck, so that's something maybe she has played against, maybe she is familiar with, so maybe trying to be conscious of that effort. So really smart play from both of these players that, like we said, are both year one masters, just aged up from the seniors division and finding themselves with success here in Roanoke. Yeah, uh, actually a very common theme. It seems like a lot of times first-year Masters come onto the scene and, and really do well scoring huge at regionals and intercontinentals like this. Um, they got a lot to prove. Absolutely. And, uh, it seems that they belong here in the Masters division. Yeah, the senior division, unfairly so I'd say, gets a lot of flack from, uh, from players in the Masters division from time to time as maybe the accomplishments, you know, it's a little easier, you know, the player base isn't as good, the regionals are smaller, but... You know, Joe and Sid here are proving that wrong, saying, hey, I'm able to come in as a first-year master and just really prove myself as my first year. Definitely. Getting set up here for game two. Um, what does Joey need to do to... Uh to get a better foot in this one. You know, I think he would love to find that turn one Bridget. I see an Ultra Ball there in his hand, so he's going to at least have the option available to him. Start shaving the X, which, you know, isn't the best, but it is actually resistant to fighting, so Buzzwell won't do a ton of damage to it, and he can potentially Sky Return it to set up for better numbers on Buzzwell later on with something like a Mewtwo. Definitely. Looks like he's Ultra Balling away a Skyfield, and I think that's a Guzma. I believe so. Um, going to probably find a Tapu Lele here, you would think. And so if I'm Joey, I feel like knowing that the wide lens is in there, I'm taking Mime and double Zerua if they're, if they're in there. Yeah, I think it, like the best case scenario for Joe would be he has a Zerua in hand already maybe, has a way to get one out and uh, wants to get, you know, because you want to get multiple Zeruas down, right? So he'll minimum want to get the two, but I think if he can find a way to get the third, which he's bringing to the front now, he may want to do that. If he has access to Mime in another way, maybe like an Ultra Ball. We're going to so see that Bridget. He, uh, he Ultra Balls oh, for Bridget. Yeah, Ultra Balls for Lele for the Bridget. There's there you the go, Lele. Joe. So he grabs Triple Zerua. You know, maybe he's thinking Sydney doesn't have uh, a Guzma and a Wide Lens in her hand, so she'll still only get one prize off of this at max, uh, and he's willing to sacrifice one of those Zerua if it comes to that. Man, that would be a pretty crazy combo here from Sydney to just, in her opening hand, have Energy, Wide Lens, Guzma, but we have seen crazier things happen on this stream, so it, it is definitely something that is possible. And, you know, honestly... I think Sydney would be totally fine, even if she didn't get to knock out two Zeruas, just going wide lens and knocking out one Zerua. Taking those out early, getting a prize fast, definitely still seems strong. Yeah, something Joey will have to do is get the Shaman out of the active spot anyway, so Sydney, maybe she's Ooh. counting on it. Red card here, going to force Sydney to shuffle her hand into her deck, draw four cards. You know, this is limiting her hand down minus one of what she had previously, so could, you know, potentially mess with what her setup wants to be. We see Joe put that Floatstone on Shaman EX, use another Shaman to set up, draw a couple more cards, and we'll see if he has anything else. Maybe a Skyfield and a Mime. Don't see it yet, though. I did see he drew into two eggs, uh, so hopefully he can get an Ultra Ball or something to get rid of those. But Sydney, the red card she drew into was quite good here. Yeah, finds Pseudo Wudo, which is a great card to play. Finds an energy card as well. And Computer Search means she'll have access to any card out of her deck if she wants it. Looks like she does have to give up a Fighting Fury Belt as well as one more card. Can't quite tell what that one is. Um, 
but it's gonna search her deck for any one card. Looks like she's eyeing up a Juniper right at the start. Definitely, that's a fresh Juniper. That's high five worthy. <laughs> She'll have no cards in hand, so nice clean Juniper. Yep, and if she does find the Wide Lens, we know she has a Fighting Energy as her last card in hand. So she'll be able to attach the active, and if she does find the Wide Lens, she can start knocking out Zerua as quick as this first turn. Yeah, you know, even if she doesn't, uh, all she really wants to find is like a Brooklet Hill yep. um, or a Rock Ruff or a Remoraid. I just set up a little more here. Um, she does find a Remoraid, a Brooklet Ooh, Hill, and, Brooklet and Hill. an Ultra Ball. Um, so this is, uh, this is a great... Sycamore for, for Sydney. She's going to get set up, start putting pressure on immediately. Yeah, absolutely. A really solid start here. Looking like she's going to eye up the Rock Ruff. We know she drew into the Rim Raid. I can maybe see getting like a um, Diancie Prism Star here, wanting to do more than just 10 damage to the Shaman on this turn. Trying to set up for easier knockouts later on with like a big powerful Jet Punch with Beast Energy and uh, you know, Fighting Fury Belt and all that stuff, but, and, you know, maybe saying that's probably not going to happen. I know I don't play Choice Band in my deck, so it's harder to get these numbers on Shaman later in the game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, opting to take that Rock Ruff. Um, she's got that Remoraid, so she'll bench that as well. She also has an Ultra Ball. She could choose to use it. Actually not going to bench, bench the that. Remoraid. Maybe she looked through her deck and knows her Octillery's prized. Yeah, interesting. So Joey here, this is, uh, this is definitely what Joey wanted to see. All of his Zeruas survive. He can get Zorox going. Um... You know, if, if he draws well, he can really uh, take control of this game, this turn even. Yeah, he could. This could be a huge turn. Joe does play the foul play Zoark, so if he gets that in play and is able to get a double colorless plus a choice band, he would be able to use Knuckle Impact to knock it out. If he whiffs the choice band, he can actually even just use Absorption GX with foul play, take a knockout on this Buzzwell here, and that would be a huge turn for Joe. Yeah, definitely. Um, going to course for seven. Um, other than that, I, he hasn't used trade yet, so he'll he'll get a few more cards. Maybe just get other Zorks. I think he'd be fine with as well. Um, he's he's in a, a much better position than he was last game. Oh, absolutely. This game looks worlds better than it did for the first game for Joe. We're going to see what he draws here off of this new hand of seven. Does he find double colorless energy? Looks like an Ultra Ball. Got a pair of eggs in his hand again. Good breakfast. <laughs> And we'll see what else he wants to do. There is an Ultra Ball, so he can use Propagation. If there is that other egg in his hand, he can discard that as well. Get that Foul Play Zorark, potentially. Maybe at this point, he'd just want to get another Zorark GX out. Keep trying to trade. Might want to go for, like, a Sky Return this turn. Chip away at this Buzzwell a little bit. Make it easier to knock out later. He has lots of options. Yeah, definitely. Um... So we'll see what he gets here with this Ultra Ball. I could see the argument for either the Foul Play Zoark or a Zoark GX. Looks like it will be that Foul Play Zoark is what he's opting for to start with. And, uh, you know, this tells me he might have a really good hand. Yeah, I didn't see the double colorless choice band combo there, but uh, maybe he's <laughs> counting on drawing into, uh, into one of them with a trade, or maybe he does have both of them. We'll have to see what Joe plays out from the rest of his hand. Going to go ahead and evolve that Lunge Zorua, actually. There's the choice the band. Or excuse me, there's the double, there is the Skyfield, and might just be going for that Absorption, absorption. GX. That's right. This is huge. Uh, Sydney was not expecting this, I imagine. Uh, this Buzzwool is going down right away. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting. That does activate uh, the baby Buzzwool, the Sledgehammer attack. Yeah, but, you know, Joe is actually going to be fine with this. He would much rather Sledgehammer come out and knock out the Zoark. Uh, with foul play as opposed to a Zoark GX. That only gives up one prize as opposed to two. That is a huge difference when you have to take the six prizes. So, yeah, we're going to see the Absorption GX come out. That's one thing that's really cool about the Zoark GX deck with the foul play. You don't have access to a GX attack naturally, but foul play means you have access to any a GX attack that your opponent might have. Definitely. Foul play is actually a card that uh, has seen play way back almost six or seven years ago when mm -hmm. it first came out. Um, used to great effect then. Fell off the map for years, um, but GXs have uh, have brought it back into the fold, and you see just how powerful that effect can be. Yeah, absolutely. GX attacks specifically, I think, is one of the things that makes this card so good. Just being able to, for a DCE in combination with Zorak GX, copy things like Absorption and Dangerous Rogue and Knuckle Impact. There's just so many potential combos that Zorak Foul Play can use. I've heard stories. I have a friend who, in Dallas... Uh, lost a game because he had a Bunnelby on his bench, one card left in deck, and his opponent used Zoark's Foul Play to copy Bunnelby's Burrow to discard uh, his last card. Brutal. So, you know, there's lots of different potential combos out there. And one thing that is also activated here this turn is B-String. 
That's a card I actually don't think we've seen used. Uh, everybody's been talking about it, but we have not seen its power firsthand uh, like we are now. Uh, Beast Ring allows you to take two energy cards out of your deck and attach them to one of your Ultra Beast Pokemon if your opponent has uh, three or four prize cards. So it looks like Sid's going to go ahead and start to power up Buzzwool GX. If she can power up two Buzzwool GX with multiple B-Strings this turn, that would be a crazy, crazy turn. And we'll have to see if that's something she's able to do. We do see the Deancey as well as the Fighting Energy on the active, spreading her energy around on these two Buzzwools. Jet Punch will be able to knock out the Fighting Weak Zoark, doing 100 damage exactly. And she's going to spread 30 damage onto that Zerua on the bench. Yeah, this was a, a nice turn from Sydney. She's got a threat. Uh, as a response with that bus wall on the bench. Uh, and Deancey, again, showing its power, allowing that Jet Punch to do so much more uh, with just that boosted 20 damage. Um, if I'm Joey, I mean, am I going for a, a big burst here with a Zork and Hex, or what am I trying to do? You know, it is definitely a tough spot. Sydney has two energies on that benched Buzzwool GX. Joe doesn't play Rescue Stretcher, so it's hard for him to get back that Foul Play Zoark without something like a Puzzle of Time combination to use that Foul Play once again. Um, so it, it's, it's an awkward spark for Joe here at this point. If he takes the knockout on the active, Sydney only needs one energy card. She'll be able to knuckle impact the Zoark with Fighting Weakness and just take an easy knockout. Joey plays that... Third, the second Zerua down, which is his full bench now, opting to Colrus. So uh, maybe he is fishing for a double puzzle. Uh, grab that Zorak foul play, grab a double, maybe hit a choice band, respond with a, a knuckle impact. Yeah, we'll have to see what he gets off of these eight cards. You know, there's so many potential cards you could draw with Colrus. Like, you could draw up to potentially 16 cards, which is just absolutely crazy. I don't think that Skyfield was in mind whenever the, uh, the makers of the game designed Colrus, but Sudowoodo makes it a little easier for, for Colrus here, you know, limiting it to 8 cards as opposed to the potential of 16 we have now in Expanded. And Joey's drawn his 8. It looks like I do see a Choice Band in there. I saw an Ultra Ball as well, but that won't be useful. If he grabs another Zorak GX, then that eliminates the foul play. Um, but it does help him that up a little more. He does trade one of the Ultra Balls. Ooh, did he get it? I don't think so. I don't see it. Does have a Compressor, can maybe thin some cards out of his deck. Might just go up and attack with Tapu Lele here this turn, or even Sky Return with Shaman EX to try to get it back and maybe use Setup on the following turn. This is a tough spot for Joe, though. Yeah, definitely. Compressors there. away. Probably just thin thinning his deck, maybe taking out some of those... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, those other supporter cards, like a Getsis or something, if it's not in there. Yeah. Egg. Getsis is generally not something that's super effective against these Buzzwool decks. And as we see in Sydney's list, she doesn't even play any copies of VS Seeker, so wouldn't be that effective. And Joe's just going to get rid of a Compressor and an Execute here, it looks like. I think a decent play would be to attack with this Lele. Just put some pressure down. Uh, don't risk that Zorak on your bench, because if you lose that, uh, you lose your draw. But... Joey, that's not really the turn Joey wanted to see coming yeah. off that knockout. And by not taking a knockout here, Joe is also giving Sydney another turn of B string. You know, it's it's not just whenever your opponent goes down to three or four prizes the first time, it's if they have three or four prizes at all. And, you know, if it doesn't look like Joe will be able to get the KO here. Sydney's going to have another opportunity to power up even more Buzzle GX. Yeah. Fortunately for Joey, even though he doesn't know it, uh, Sydney actually only plays two copies of Beast Ring. Um, you know, interesting, she seems to be taking a slower, more tempoed approach, but uh, she will have maybe access to that last one to knock out this Lele on, with an active Buzzwool. Yeah, we're going to see Communication come out, another expanded card that we've seen played throughout the years and having, you know, some good synergy with these executes that we see played so much nowadays. Going to find another Zorak GX, can start to trade once more and try to find one more card. You know, this is a, a pretty good thing for, for Joey because uh, that Zerua is still on the bench, so he can still use a foul play for next turn, um, but this allows him to set up for a big combo next turn. Um, you know, hopefully he doesn't, this Lele doesn't get knocked out, um, so he can, he can respond in kind. See what he opts to do here. Looks like with that DCE on Lele, his best option is going to be that energy drive. Will hit for a solid 60, actually with Choice Band moving it up to 80 damage. Nine. Definitely, excuse me, so, uh, yeah, it, 90 damage, definitely a solid chunk, and uh, going to put this Buzzwool down to just 100 HP remaining. 
Destiny does have that strong energy. Looks like she has a Lycan Rock in her hand as well. So uh, if she can find a way to get maybe a Float Stone, um, she can retreat and use Buzzwool to knock it out. Um, alternatively, uh, if she finds a Beast Ring, she can Jet Punch a Zorak, but she opts to pull a Zork up here, attached to the bench, and Sycamore. Mm, we'll see if she can find a Float Stone. That may be what she's digging for here at this point. Doesn't get it. Doesn't look like she did. She does still have access to Baby Buzzwell. Joe is at four prizes, but no Float Stone, no Elixirs to get another energy in play. So, and no, it does not find that last copy of Beast Ring either. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm Sydney, do I attach the Fury Belt here and kind of just put myself much farther out of range? Do a little bit more damage and, and force Joey to go all in with these Zoraks. Yeah, I think yeah, as we see Sydney does attach that fighting fear belt, she's gonna force Joe to find like that hex maniac turn to get around Sudowoodo's roadblock or to find their field blower. But even though Sydney didn't get the knockout here this turn, she's still doing a ton of damage to that Zorark and puts 30 on that Zoro, forcing Joe to evolve it once again. So he's got quite the grip of cards here, so I'm sure he's ready. You know, he was hoping that. He wouldn't lose another Pokemon this, this past turn, so he's probably ready to respond with a big Hex knockout. We'll have to see what he goes with. If Joe could, I think a incredibly powerful turn for Joe would be to, like, and this is a lot of cards, but if Joe was to somehow get puzzles to get back the black-white Zoark, able to find a Guzma, and able to find the Choice Band, he could Absorption GX, K, excuse me, Knuckle Impact, KO that binged Buzzwell GX, uh, but they're actually going to just go ahead and opt for the stand and another Zoark option that we see here. You know, and this is interesting. Um, the stand in, Sydney only has 300 bench, uh, or 400 bench, so Mind Jack will only be doing 130 damage, um, which I. Is that I don't believe, I think that's 10 short of knocking out this buzzwool. Yeah, Joe would need to find a choice band or a field blower to get rid of this Fighting Fury Belt. He does have options to find it, though, and off of this Colrus, certainly lots of cards drawn as well, especially with two trades still available. Draws. I see one puzzle in there. Um, so that can at least get a double back if he finds a second one. A mime as well. Uh, that won't be too useful anymore, but... Yeah, it's kind of funny, like, Mime is such a good card in this matchup, but we're kind of at the point where Sid has done the damage that she needs to do to bench Pokemon at this point, so we'll see the second trade come out. Does he Joe... does have a computer Ooh. search, so this could be uh, this could be a knockout with the stand-in Zorark. He does have a double. Computer search can get him what other, other, whatever other piece he needs. Actually, doesn't even need to use it. He's got the field blower right there in his hand. Yeah, this is big for Joey. This is what he wants. Keep using these powerful non-EX Zorks to really upset Sydney's prize trades. You know, and Joe will actually go down to just two prizes left, and Sid still has, you know, despite having a pretty solid setup, she's only taken one prize this game. Uh, definitely. You know, the, the last time we saw these Buzzwool, uh, this Buzzwool deck, it seemed like it was almost stumbling into prize cards, uh, whereas Sydney can't seem to draw any. Yeah. So we'll see which option Joe goes for. We know he has access to getting a choice band through computer search if he wants it, or he may have one in his hand. He also has Field Blower. Which one do you think would be a better, better call for Joe here? Either Field Blower to get rid of the Fighting Fear Belt, or Choice Band to get the extra damage he needs. Uh, you know, I like Field Blower here. Um, you know, Choice Band is useful on a lot of different targets, whereas Field Blower, we only need to use it once to trigger this. Uh, so... He opts to do the choice band, though. Uh, maybe, you know, I guess have that in the discard for later so he can puzzle it back. Uh, something you can't do with, or not useful with Field Blower. Yeah, and maybe wanting to save Field Blower for the potential to take the uh, Fighting Fury, uh, a potential Fighting Fury belt off the next Buzzwool. So maybe wanting to save that option. That looks like that's what Joe is going for. And yeah, Mind Jack here doing uh, 160 damage will be enough to knock out that Buzzwool. And over to Sid's turn. She's found herself in a tough spot here. Yeah, you know, she, her hand is looks like Zygarde, a handful of energy, a Fury Belt, and not much else here. Um, this game is really starting to run away from Sydney. Um, I don't really know how she can kind of crawl back into this one. You know, Zygarde is a pretty solid attacker. It can't get foul played, but it's kind of uh, too late at that almost at this point in the game. Joe's already used his foul play. He only has two prizes left. All he's going to need really is a big turn of Hex Maniac filling his bench to take a knockout on one of these GX Pokemon or EX Pokemon on Sydney's side. Yeah, if I'm Sydney, I almost want to find a way to get an Elixir and start attacking with that baby Buzzwool. Uh, it will knock out this stand-in, and it'll put Joey in an odd prize position. Yeah, still can do enough damage because of that DNC Prism Star, and of course, Fighting Weakness as well. Uh, we could also, you know, 
maybe see multiple attachments through multiple elixirs and even a uh, sledgehammer is the second attack or swing around maybe is the second attack on that baby buzzwool can potentially use that to do some damage as well she gets uh, two energy it looks like in an elixir um, we'll see if she hits this she does not hit that uh, she did attach to the zygarde this turn as well so i imagine maybe she's going all in with the zygarde um, or just keeping the buzz active and using jet punch for the knockout again yeah, she can use Jet Punch, and uh, that'll mean that she can use maybe a Knuckle Impact on the next turn. Does get Fighting Fury Belt, so forces Joe to find one more card, but we know that he has that Field Blower in his hand, saving it from the last turn. Looks like 180 damage on that Zoark as well, so it can actually get knocked out in the following turn, and Sydney is actually in a spot where she could take a four prize turn next turn if she finds like her Beast Energy Prism Star and a Guzma can bring up that Zoark and take out both of these Zoark GXs and take a four prize turn. That would be huge for Sydney. Uh, you know, a lot of times it seems like sometimes players, uh, they're out of it with these weird jet punch uh, snipe damages, and then all of a sudden it stacks up, and uh, Joey is now almost on like a one turn clock here. He already does have once. Yeah, he can, of course, win the game this turn if he finds a w choice band, double color synergy, and a way to fill his bench. He can knock out this buzzwool. He already has the field blower we know in his hand, so he can use that to get rid of this fighting fury belt. There's the DCE. I think if Joe had this combo, though, he would have already played it down. Another thing Joey po could possibly hunt for is a, a Mewtwo Evo uh, and that field blower that he didn't use uh, to take out the fury belt and knock it out with that Mewtwo Evo. That's definitely an option for him. We're going to have to see his field what Joe double. has. He's got lots of cards in his hand. Certainly has many options available to him. I did see a VS Seeker, so he has an option of multiple supporters here. With no artillery on Sydney's side, an into four could be pretty good as well. Definitely. Okay, field Blowers gets rid of that Fighting Fury Belt. Hasn't played a supporter yet, but you know maybe he just, if he has the ability, just goes for a big Colrus, hopes to find what he needs. That could be the case. I think. Oh, a gets us here actually. Finds a floatstone. Sees that Sydney has a Guzma and a strong energy in her hand. Ooh, that's actually Sydney next turn. Uh, if Joey doesn't get rid of this buzzhole right now, Sydney, will she have enough to knock out both of these Zorks? Well, we do 70 switch. damage with the jet punch. Uh, she has the strong right, as well. Right, right. So, so that would be 70 plus 20 more from the Princess's Cheer. That's 90. 180 damage with the 30 damage on Zorg GX. Sydney actually just has the game next turn if uh, jo Well, no, she doesn't have a way to retreat a Pokemon on her bench yet. She, well, she has Guzma in her hand. So she, so can, she retreat. can retreat the two basic fighting energies off of the Buzzwool. Guzma, attach strong energy, and that would be what she needs. Does Joe have what he needs, though? Computer Search was a good card to draw if that gets this. Does it get him what he needs? Joe's just kind of trying to map it out. Does he have the game here or not? Now, I don't think the Mewtwo is in the discard. So if I'm Joey, uh, do I have a way to grab Mewtwo and knock this out? Um, or, or maybe a Hex and a couple other basic Pokemon? I don't really know. Yeah, uh, you know, there's like just so many different potential options here, but Joe just may not have any, like, he may have pieces of multiple of the different options. He may have pieces of the way to get the Mewtwo knockout. He may have pieces of the way to get the Zoark knockout, but just n doesn't have all of the pieces available to him at once. Now, I didn't see what he took. Just threw it down here. Still, Still debating. See. Looks like he's not sure if this is what he wants to take or not yet. It's like the other card he was thinking about was a puzzle, but opted not to take it, so I'm not sure what else he has in his hand here. Yeah, and looks like uh, Joe is ha having to move a little quicker here. Gonna see what this one card is that he got. Um, and if he doesn't knock out this active buzzwool, I think, Sid like, like we said, Sydney's got that Guzma, she's got that strong energy. That should be what she needs to get the game. Mr. Mime, actually, it looks like is what he got, and that takes away that four prize turn option. That's, that's huge for Joey. Uh, that's, that's what he needed. If he couldn't kill this buzzhole and win this turn, he buys himself another turn. Um, you know, in this situation now, uh, if you're not going for the knockout, do you just push up the Lele and attack with Energy Drive? Honestly, it wouldn't be terrible. You do a lot of damage. Actually, even more now that he's put another double colorless energy on this Tapu Lele, he knows he's going to lose the Lele to a uh, Knuckle Impact. But he, I think he's okay with that at this point because he's going to do so much damage and just set himself up to win on the following turn. Definitely. It looks like he's going to energy drive for, uh, is that 150? 170, 170, actually, I believe. So yeah. does a lot of damage here. Leaves the buzzle actually with only 20 HP. 
Sky Return could even knock this out at this point. So what does Sid have? She top decked a Max Elixir for the turn. I wonder what she's going to go for. It looks like attaching to the Zygarde EX. Going to use Guzma. Brings up that Zoark. Can take a knockout here with a Cell Storm. And, you know, there is still just that heavily, heavily damaged uh, Zoark on the bench. And Joe just shows the VS Seeker. He's got the Guzma that he needs to take that knockout on the Buzzwool on the bench. And that is going to be game number two. And we're going to move into a game number three with only 11 minutes remaining. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with... Not a lot of time left. That's definitely in Sydney's favor. Buzzwool takes quick prizes, uh, especially in Pokemon weak to fighting. So Joey needs to set up, and he needs to set up immediately. Yeah, this is, like you said, when it's a short game, if there's going to be a finisher, it seems like Buzzwool is normally the one that would come out on top in those instances. Uh, Buzzwool can be a little clunkier, though, from time to time. There's always the off chance that Sydney starts, like, just one big basic Buzzwool, and Joe's able to blow up on his second turn and get a knockout with a Zoark GX's Riotous beating. So that's basically, I think, is what's going to have to happen, is one of these players is going to have to have a, an explosive start. One player is going to have to have a slow start in order for this to not finish in a tie. Yeah, definitely. Um... And, you know, I think Sydney, you know, she drew pretty well through that game. I think just missed a couple of key things on specific turns. Like, maybe she could have gotten that second beast ring off, gotten two more energies in play. That could have been really helpful. And, you know, it, it, it was just really odd. She got super set up, but it's still only taken one prize card. Yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest things is she never got that Octillery out. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she did prize it. And uh, you can see how useful Octillery is to the Buzzwool decks, especially as the games go uh, farther and farther. Ooh, on Joe's side, looks like he is starting that Mewtwo from Evolutions, which can definitely apply a decent chunk of pressure to this Buzzwool. These guys are going to go ahead and flip their starting Pokemon over, and we're going to get game number three underway. These guys are going to get this started and definitely going to want to you know, try to finish this game if they can. Sydney starts with that baby Buzzwool again. Um, you know, it, it put in a little bit of work so far already, um, but Mewtwo is the perfect counter to it here. Yeah, Psychic Weakness over on that Buzzwool side. Mewtwo can definitely hit it for a decent chunk of damage on this first turn if Sid does choose to attach to it. Karina's going to be her supporter of choice on the first turn here. Maybe she'll find, like, ooh, looks like it's going to be an Elixir she's eyeing up, trying to get multiple energies in play on this first turn of the game. She already has an energy in hand and another Elixir as well, so maybe she's just opting to set up uh, for a big attack and just start kind of rushing Joey down. You know, she probably knows there's not too much time left, uh, so pressure is everything here. You know, she could maybe try to set herself up for a turn by getting Wide Lens here to maybe go for, like, a Guzma on the following turn to get the KO on multiple Trubbishes on Joe's side. We'll see what she opts to get, though. Definitely looking like Buzzwool is going to be the fighting Pokemon of choice. It's just kind of this, this trainer card. What is this item that she takes on this other uh, part of Karina? Yeah. Opts to take the Elixir here, so, yeah, maybe she's just trying to get as much energy on the board as possible. Um, just kind of outvalue Joey. Yeah, and we'll see if she can get a decent chunk of energies in play this turn. Here comes Elixir number one. We know she does have that second one in her hand. Oh, big whiff. That is definitely unfortunate. You know, she does only play eight copies, which is a little lower than what we see from time to time. Like in standard, the typical counts are nine and ten. Um, and, you know, she does already have the one in her hand, unfortunately. See if number two can hit for her, though. She there does get this one. That's big. You know, even just hitting one of them, getting two energy on board, she's fine with. Yep. Um, this is still very good. Um, you know, she's really counting on Joey not being able to, to attack, uh, at least right away anyway. So she's got a couple turns. Absolutely. And I think I actually did see that Beast Energy Prism Star in her hand. She can attach that to either the active Buzzwool or the Benched One. Going to go ahead and put it on the Benched One. And that actually can boost her damage a lot. Like, the... the 10 damage between Strong Energy and Beast Energy is a lot more, especially when you consider the Fighting Weakness on Zoar. Yeah, actually, you know, the, the dream combo for Buzzwool decks is uh, DNC on the bench, Choice Band on Buzzwool, and Beast Energy on Buzzwool. And that actually allows them to one-shot a Zoark GX with Jet Punch for one energy, yeah. which is insane. Absolutely crazy combo. Unfortunately, Sydney... You know, choosing to play Fighting Fear Belts in her list here doesn't have access to that potential combo, but... You know, Choice Band, it's, it's, it's an interesting call. You know, Fighting Fury Belt is definitely great. It gives you the extra HP. You do still do 10 extra damage. 
So I, I guess Sydney was just valuing the extra HP more so than the damage output of things like Muscle Band and Choice Bands that we've seen from the other Zoark decks. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, there, there's only one Garb deck, uh, but maybe she figures that not a lot of people are expecting it, and so they'll cut their Field Blowers. Um, or maybe it's, it's great for Mirror, for, for the Jet Punch Wars. Oh, absolutely. So we're going to see Bridget comes out on Joe's side. Gets three Zeruas. No Mr. Mime yet, though. Good Sydney finds the Wide Lens combo and take a couple knockouts. Didn't find the Wide Lens last turn with Karina. Might not have that option available to her. Yeah, you see Joey was eyeing the Mime, um, but he figures the chances of Sydney being able to, uh, to Guzma, Wide Lens, knockout on this turn after knockout in the last turn, probably pretty low. Yeah. Um, and I think Sid does only have like one more card in her hand, and I'm not sure what it was. She may not have that much available to her on this next turn. Joe's going to get his three Zeruas down on the bench. Does still have one more bench spot. No Sudowoodo on Sid's side yet, but just going to go ahead and pass. Sid top decks a Karina, though. That is interesting. Uh, she has a way to get this Buzzwool uh, out of the active. She could Karina for the wide lens and start Ooh. knocking out these, um, these Zerua, but that, I don't know. She doesn't look like she really has much at all. She has the Guzma, but unfortunately can't play Karina and Guzma in the same turn. If she had grabbed that Wide Lens last turn, she could maybe have targeted down multiple Zeruas, but I think she's content here after hitting that Elixir. Just going to go ahead and bring up this Zerua, take the knockout, and she'll put an energy probably on this Baby Buzzwool. Or actually just going to hold the energy she for now. She not attack at all. And that's interesting. You know, she doesn't have Pseudo Wudo, so Joey really has free, way, free reign to just, you know, kind of go as hard as he can this turn and go for this knockout. And she doesn't really have a response on board. Yeah, you know, not attaching the energy means that she's going to have to find one next turn if Joe was to, like, play a hand disruption card like Red Carter in. But so many energy cards in her deck, you got to think she'd be able to find them. And plus, she'd also be at four prizes. Joe would also be at four prizes, which means she could use those B-string trainer cards. Definitely. So Joey sends up the Mewtwo. Uh, you know, maybe he thinks that with his current hand, this big Zor Zorak play is a lot less realistic. You know, maybe he's just going to try and put in a bunch of chip damage with this Mewtwo, which he is doing. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have a very strong hand, unfortunately. Looks like Colrus is going to be his supporter option. Only going to draw five cards with this. Not what you want to be doing. Not super ideal. We'll see if he can find more Zeruas, maybe another Zoark, or even Mr. Mime. Yeah. He could have sent up a Zerua and tried to get the knockout here with Zoark GX, like you mentioned. He also could have tried to get a potential knockout with the black-white Zoark with the foul play, copying Absorption, as we saw him do in the last game. But it looks like, uh, you know, he's just opting for kind of the safer route, just going to chip away at this Buzzwool. Yeah. So he draws five. We'll see what he gets. If I'm Joey, I think the thing that I really want here is just another Zork GX, which he does have. Just want to be able to set up more. He's going to trade immediately. Trades away that gets us. Oops. Drops a Via Seeker on the field. Not going to play that quite yet. But yeah, just discarding that gets us. It's a fine supporter to have in the discard pile. If you want to play it later on, it's fine to have access to it via Seeker and Puzzles. And like we said, it's not super good against Buzzwool anyway. Trade number two. Again. So he gets rid of a Hex, slightly more useful. And there is a red card I saw he drew, uh, but he opts to just attack, do 100 and, uh, 120 20 damage, damage yeah. to that Buzzwall. That's a lot of pressure on Sydney's lone Buzzwall GX. Yeah, and her only real way to deal with this Mewtwo immediately would be to attach another energy to this active Buzzwall, which would definitely be something that it's like a real, it like would really feel bad because you're attaching some, another energy to something that's going to get knocked out the coming turn. Yeah. She's careening. Going to take a pseudo Wudo. Maybe she's hoping that, you know, Joy won't have the ability to hex and go off. And she's grabbing a B string in preparation uh, for her next turn. Yeah, if Joe does take a knockout on this Buzzwell that has 120 damage on it, Sydney will be able to use that B string to get some multiple energies in play. Looks like she's actually going to go ahead and attach the energy and take the KO here. And uh, just valuing really getting rid of this Mewtwo and really dealing with it. Joey likes to see this. He only gave up one prize there, and now he can take a knockout with his Lele, sparing his Zorark uh, to fight the next turn. Communication. We'll, we'll see what this gets. Could maybe find a Tapu Lele for a supporter. Maybe even Shaman eyeing up Mr. Mime as well. That is a good option. Pseudo Wudo, also a potential option as well. So we hear time being called for the players in the rounds right now. Uh, these players on stream are on a separate clock, as you guys can see. Two minutes remaining. Definitely coming down to the wire here. I'm not sure that we'll be able to finish the game, but there is a chance. You know, Sydney 
in turns could take her last four prize cards. And Joey Red Cards actually kind of bailing Sydney out. You know, he doesn't realize it, but Sydney wasn't really working with a lot. Uh, so that red card might actually give her a chance to keep going. Yeah, and he knows she had the uh, B string in her hand. He wants to maybe get rid of that, force her to find it again, so that he's not just opening himself up to getting knocked out. But Sydney finds a B string once again. again. Uh, Max Elixir, as well as the Finding Fury Belt and a strong energy. She doesn't find the uh, supporter card she needs, but she just finds a ton of ways to get energies in play. And actually, I think. Uh, the hand she has now is enough to knock out this Lele with that baby buzz tool. Um, so that's not really what Joey wanted to see. We'll see here. He does trade twice. What else does he have access to? Not sure yet. Yeah, Sydney is definitely going to be set up for a really strong turn, and I think she's in a position where she definitely could win this game, despite time having been called or coming down to the wire. Excuse me. Joe's going to go ahead and play via Seeker. Gets it, gets this out, puts it in his hand. Maybe wants to get rid of that potential B string. He did red card this turn. Hasn't played a support yet. Ooh, that is huge. That is huge. Gets rid of three cards. Will be able to draw three cards. Gets rid of the uh, the B string. Gets rid of the Max Elixir. Gets rid of the Fighting Fury Belt. Leaves Sydney with just a strong energy in her hand. This is uh, if now I didn't see a double colorless in Joey's hand. I don't think so. Uh, he can't capitalize on this fully, but maybe he gets it off of this. Gets us. I don't think he got it, so at least Sydney's buzzwool is spared, but still such a huge turn. Sydney is in 100% top deck mode here. And looks like time may have just been called over on the player side. Our clock might be a few seconds off, but looks like Joe is going to be turn zero. Sydney will be turn one. Does top deck an end, though? That's a good thing to bail her out. Uh, but, you know, I think they both. I don't see a way for Sydney to take a knockout this turn. Okay, there we've just been notified they actually have a two-minute time extension, so the game is continuing on, and it looks like there was a ruling earlier on that needed to happen, and so they've got a two-minute time extension. Sydney's going to attach the strong energy to Buzzwool, plays the end, and um, you know normally you would say maybe she can hit a couple of elixirs here and actually attack with this Buzzwool this turn to knock out this Lele, but she's already played two elixirs and she only plays three in her list. And she ends herself. Uh, she's got an Ultra Ball for a Lele, but that Sudo Udo is currently locking out her bench. So what she has here is what she's going to be able to work with. Opts to just retreat into the Fresh Buzz Soul. Um, just Jet Punch, put more damage on one of those Zora. Yeah, no Mr. Mom on Joe's side yet. Going to just spread the damage around. This is definitely smart. Does 70 damage for just one energy to this active Tapu Lele. So if Joey can take a knockout this turn... Uh, and especially before time is called, uh, Joey will be in a pretty commanding position here, and he needs to find his Hex Maniac first and foremost. Yeah, if he can have a big turn of Hex plus benching five more Pokemon and finding the double colorless energy and moving this Tapu Lele in the active is definitely a way that he could get the knockout on this clean Buzzle with no damage on it. And it'd be very easy for him to knock out that Buzzle with 120 on it later in the game, so just needs to find a way to take... Uh, these last, you know, all these these last six prize cards, but the rest of his prizes. Yeah, you know, that's a, it, he needs quite a few cards to pull this off. Uh, but opting actually instead to take the Mr. Mime, so I think he concedes that it's probably not going to happen. Just wants to kind of conserve, play a little defensively, make sure that Sydney can't win the game. Um, you know, not give up any any good board position. Yeah, so we're at the point here where. These, I think time was just called. I believe Joe is going to be turn zero. I think we just saw the judge's hand come in. So trade number one comes out for Joe. Which sounds like it's been about two minutes. So trade number two comes out. And, ooh, double puzzle. That could get him back some of his resources. See what he wants to grab. Double colorless energy is one of the options. Looks like he's looking at red card. Ooh, interesting. Maybe yeah. he wants to just limit what Sid has in her hand once again. There's another red card. The last time he did this, Sydney uh, drew a perfect set of cards that he was able to get rid of. So. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what Sid gets off of these four. And at this point, we're at a point where Joe is not able to win this game. But Sydney does have the potential to win. But she's going to have to draw extremely well to do that. And I think Joe will 
just wisely just play around B string here. Not going to take a knockout. Like normally, if this game was continuing on, he'd try to take a knockout, but he's wanting here to preserve the tie. You know, each of these players, you know, taking a tie is not the worst thing for either of them. This is a a lot longer of a tournament. Usually people at 6-1 and 2 will be able to make day 2. Joe is at 3-0-1 currently. Sydney at 4-0. So a tie is not that bad for either of these players at this point in the tournament. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's especially especially after how bad game 1 was for Joey. A tie is fine here, you know. He, he uh, managed to recover in game 2. And then game 3, slow start for him. But he was able to kind of delay it and ensure that tie. Yeah. And I think Joe has probably played these last couple turns with this in mind, saying, hey, I probably won't be able to win this game, but I can still try to preserve the tie, try to make sure I still get that one match point. It does make a difference for later on in the day. And yeah, Sydney's just going to go ahead and jet punch here, and this, this is going to end in a tie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Joey just has to pass. Uh, they both know that this is the end of the game. Sydney can't take five prizes uh, next turn, so... Uh, that'll be a tie here. Yeah, Joe. Uh, we'll see if he wants to play it out. Maybe just get one knockout just to do it. I guess he could, you know, potentially do that just to show that hey, I would have been able to get the knockout here. But we'll see what he opts to do. Yeah, I think they're just kind of realizing. Yeah, this is going to end in a tie. These players shake hands, and that is going to, you know, wrap up round number five for us. Ending in a tie. Definitely don't ever love to see a tie on stream, but. These guys have played each other many times throughout the years. Like we said, both first-year masters. Both of these people have been playing since they were in the juniors division. So I'm sure have played each other many, many times through the years and are very familiar with each other. So good sportsmanship, good friends on both the, both sides of the table. Yeah, definitely. You know, that was that was a very interesting game. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen a game really between these decks where both really set up. Seems like one is kind of preying on another's poor setup. Um, but uh, definitely an interesting list from Sydney. Um, a lot of cool tricks that we saw throughout the game. So... Uh, very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure we'll be seeing more from both of them.